We live in a world where we don't have to get out of bed to be alive. We live in a world where we can get to the top of Mount Everest without having to climb. We live in a world where we can see the beauties of Africa without having to say please or thank you in a local dialect. We live in a world of two dimensions. What is one dimension lost when we got the other two without working? We live in a world where it's all about the destination because there was no journey. But because of these things, we live in a world where people are dying and they haven't lived yet. And this is the truth. Technology has made this the sad truth because people are taking their last breath and thinking back on their so-called experiences, but they are all mounted on a living room wall and the details are fuzzy because you can only zoom in so far on an iPhone because people have seen flowers, but they haven't smelled flowers. People have been places, but they haven't experienced the culture. The truth is that nowadays, people just aren't living like they used to because technology has taken away the climb, taken away the fight, and handed you a second place prize to hang on your shelf. And when it is said out loud, you're probably thinking, well, who wants second place? but that is a compromise that so many people are willing to make. And this, this is not fair to all concerned. This is not fair to my generation because your childhood memories of climbing in trees filled with figments of your imagination and running barefoot to your best friend's house and actually knocking on a door, those are gone because now tree houses are made of pixels. And imaginations are squandered because characters are already made by someone that you will never meet. And kids' feet are soft because instead of running to go knock on that door, kids simply sit in their room and tap a screen to FaceTime their friends. But now face to FaceTime is gone. And this is not fair because when people say kids these days or this generation, why is this generation so messed up? Maybe it's because the technology that someone dreamt up with their imagination has taken over ours and started thinking for us. So this, this is not fair to all concerned because the childhood of the past has been replaced with a digital one. But technology has so much potential Technology has the potential to build goodwill and better friendships, but it also has the potential to make us miss the opportunity. Because while families are talking to beloved soldiers overseas and pen pals of the past are hearing each other's voices, while technology has allowed the mute to talk and the lame to walk, some people have stopped stopping to talk and just stopped talking. So those who can walk have stopped walking and sat down. So now neighbors are strangers. And someone at the top of Mount Everest, at the same time as someone who just climbed to that very spot, won't see each other. Because there is a virtual wall, a computer screen between them. Because one chose to climb and one chose to sit down. And now that I have a GPS on my phone, I don't stop and practice my Spanish, ask directions from a local. But that local, she knew my cousin. But I'll never know that, and now we'll never be friends. Technology can do great things. It is simply misused. Technology was meant to build bonds, not break them. But when people cower behind screens, and leave comments on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter that degrade other people instead of using their technology to build service, to build community, and to build goodwill, but instead tearing it apart, technology is misused. And that is not the fault of the creators, but the users, because intentions of goodwill and better friendships are in many instances disintegrated by social cruelty and oblivion. Let me ask you, how could this be beneficial to all concerned?
I mean, obviously, all credit where it's due. Technology has monstrously benefited the diseased, disabled, and distanced individuals on a global scale. It has benefited those who are in need of the benefits. But technology has taken a certain aspect away from life, from those who use it obliviously for things that they simply don't need. Haven't you noticed that the world around us has started losing their conversation skills? Because when texting, we can simply wait to reply until we've thought of something funny enough, something interesting enough to reply with. But a firm handshake, steady eye contact, and actually listening to who's speaking are courtesies of the past. Because emotion has been replaced with emoticons. I love you and I'm sorry are simply oozing out of people's mouths without realizing the impact that those words used to have. So when you meet that person and you tell them that you love them, or you hurt someone that you care about and you profusely apologize, how are they supposed to know that you are being genuine? These powerful words have been degraded by meaningless overuse, and this in no way has benefited the communication or relationships of the age of technology. You see, technology was made to propel man farther than ever before, not allow us to go the same distance with less effort. But technology, technology is not going to stop progressing, so we as a human race must start using technology in the right ways. Let us let technology take us farther than ever before. But let us not stop living or experiencing like true human beings. We can change the social tendencies of our generation. We can bring back the ambition, emotion, and adventure associated with the human race. So let us make the choice. Let us wake up every morning and decide not only to be alive, but to live today. Thank you.